And now our host, Stephen Lee Morris. This week we are joined by Stephen Sachs. Stephen is an internationally produced playwright and he is the co-founder and co-artistic director of the much heralded Fountain Theatre, which he co-founded in 1990. Stephen Sachs, welcome to Animal Farm. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's nice to have this opportunity to chat with you. How are you and how is the Fountain Theatre? I'm well. I'm okay. I'm hanging in, you know, like, like everyone else. Good days, bad days, you know, pushing on. Uh, the Fountain Theatre is doing uh, about as well as could be expected. Uh, you know, like everyone else, uh, our doors have been closed since last March. Uh, what uh, now? First, I guess the, the best news I read, really about anybody, but particularly about the Fountain Theater, is that you were licensed by the or get, got permission from the city to have outdoor performances. And what does that mean? And uh, when does that start realistically? And what? Yeah, what does that actually mean? Well, the outdoor stage is going to be a a, a, a huge game changer for us uh, at the Fountain Theater. And I hope also for the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it, it came about uh, last year when we were closed down because of COVID. Yes. Uh, we were months into the pandemic and I'm sitting downstairs at the Fountain Theater in, in, the, in, the, in the theater itself and looking at my, my intimate little space, yeah. uh, which only has 78 seats, 80 seats. and. You know, our intimacy has always been uh, a blessing, uh, but it also turned out to be a bit of a curse because even with the, the COVID uh, regulations guidelines in place with social distancing and everything, if yeah. we were to bring in an audience and, and sat them six feet apart, in my little theater, that would mean that my 80 seat theater would go down to 12, <laughs> you know, yeah. which does not make for a robust financial model. I you know, yeah, I could be uh, cynical and say 12. That's about the average attendance of most uh, intimate theaters I see. In but, um, but, yeah, but, but that's, you know. I, that's not true. That's actually not true. <laughs> um, not on true. a bad day, it's true. Yeah, but, sometimes it's uh, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's so, not what you want to plan around. No, it's not what you want to go to your board of directors with, as this is, you know, uh, an idea of a good plan. So I'm sitting there and, I, and, and then it just struck me, uh, why don't we go outdoors? Uh, we have our, we own our building. Uh, the Fountain Theater owns its own building, which is its own <clears throat> uh, enormous blessing unto itself. And we also own the parking lot. So I thought, let's go outside. Uh, why not set up an outdoor theater uh, in the parking lot, you know, clear out the parking lot, bring in a stage, bring in uh, chairs, seat them uh, correctly, and perform outdoors. And, and what's your capacity in this outdoor theater, this imagined outdoor theater? It'll be 84 seats, so it's almost, exact, almost exactly the same. Right. Uh, plus, we'll have some cocktail tables for you know, refreshments and dining, and, and we have the gorgeous weather. And what could be better than being outdoors you know, in Los Angeles on a warm summer night in enjoying theater? So. Uh, that's how that was the idea. Uh, so the, or, you know, there always is like the big idea, and then it's the uh, the making it happen. Uh, so uh, thus began my journey into uh, city planning land and getting uh, permission from the city of Los Angeles. And how did that go about? Who who did you actually uh, appeal to? Well, I, I had meetings with our council member, Mitchell Farrell, who yep. is fabulous. Yep. And he's yep. always been a strong advocate for intimate theater, for theater in general in Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, and then I uh, had to apply to the city planner's office through the city because it turns out I had to get a special permit to gather people outdoors. It was okay if we were in the building, but in order to bring that same number of people outside and do performances, I needed a special permit because the Fountain Theater is also in in a residential neighborhood. So uh, that just meant you know, a, a ton of meetings, uh, a massive application package that I had to fill out and do reports and do sound testing and, and you know neighborhood impact studies and all that stuff. So anyway, I went down yeah, that road yeah, and, and did it and ultimately got permission 
uh, from uh, the city to go ahead and, and do that. So okay, I have two questions and then we'll go to bigger picture things. Um, one is, uh, well, do you have any idea of when you may be actually performing on that outdoor stage? We're shooting for June. We're hoping for this, this June, actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, to start, uh, we're going to load in the stage in the next couple of months, and uh, our plan is to begin uh, performances this June. Again, now that we have the the city uh, sanctioned, uh, we're now uh, just waiting for the COVID numbers now to come down. It's all now about getting permission from the Department of Public Health yes. Yes. to allow us now to gather. Uh, as a as a group outside. at least outdoors at least outdoors yes. now here's here's the rudest question of all i can't wait to come to see your premiere but unfortunately your parking lot is um otherwise occupied where are people where are 84 people going to park in east hollywood well um we our parking lot normally held about 30 32 cars so uh we do have street uh, street parking but we are making an arrangement with a restaurant around the corner to do oh, uh, that's parking right. there as well yeah. i so, remember your street parking yes i, 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 I <laughs> yeah. remember parking in atwater village and walking back to the fountain theater it was about a two and a <laughs> yeah, half hour walk yeah. it is <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. but, but it's picturesque though but the, the <laughs> restaurant thing is that is good news no so, yeah we're gonna be seriously we also have a, a a new a partnership with uh our vendor across the street who's who has offered uh, his parking lot free of charge so we have a lot of goodness. community support and they oh goodness that is that is really yeah. good news and yeah. then the the final question about this very specific um area of interest is how is your programming going to change or is it going to change now that you're under the stars rather than under a rather low ceiling well some of the it, it's yeah it's interesting uh some of the pieces that that we were looking at doing uh, because of their intimacy, I, I think still will fit uh, and, and play better inside. But the idea of being able to bust some of these shows open on a larger stage outside in the open air uh, just feels so exciting to me. Yes, my, I can imagine. My, my, yeah, my plan for the theater is to do both ultimately, uh, is that we will perform outdoors in the summer. And because the theater is, the stage itself is modular, it's made up of 18 different little platform, uh, it's not little, they're steel deck platforms like a, in a rock and roll show. Uh, they, it all breaks down and we're, and we're gonna store it. Uh, so then uh, once, the, once COVID uh, hopefully is, is contained, we then go back inside, we'll produce indoors, and then every summer, my, my plan is to bring the stage out and do outdoor theater at the Fountain Theater every summer under the stars in, in Hollywood. That sounds lovely. I mean, we've got to, um, Theatricum Botanicum. We've got um, obviously yeah. independent Shakespeare Festival. So there's clearly a precedent for that. Going yeah. back, I guess, to uh, Sophocles, which uh, if it, were, it was good enough for him, I don't know why it's you know? not good enough for us. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, in terms of you are participating in these weekly conference calls, Zoom calls with artistic directors around the country. Uh, we are, I'm recording this late February, 2020. What is, um, what is the mood, the tone? How are people doing? How's the community doing? We are uh, hanging together. Uh, it's been a, a, a remarkable journey, these uh, weekly meetings. Uh, they started uh, when after the pandemic first broke out and it was really I think initiated by Gary Grossman at the Skylight. Right. And, uh, for those who may not know what it is is that every Tuesday all the artistic directors of all of, of a lot of the many of the intimate theaters in Los Angeles we meet on Zoom together uh, and it started out as kind of a, a therapy session, really. We, at first, it was just kind of commiserating. Yes. Uh, saying, what are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? What are you doing? This is what I'm doing. What right, are you doing? Right. You know, no, that's important. That's yeah, important. yeah. Yeah. You know, and as you know, Stephen, you know, LA is such a spread out landscape. And uh, in Los Angeles, it's very easy for all of us art makers and arts patrons to to be in our own little village and our little fiefdom, uh, and we don't really get out and, and, and 
yeah. interact with each other as much as we would like to. So this these Zoom meetings really provided an opportunity for us to 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 see each other again face to face. And so at first they were all they were kind of bitch and moan sessions at first. And what are we going to do? How are we going to survive? Yeah. There was a lot of panic. Yeah. Uh, and fear. Yeah. Uh, and then. Uh, because a lot of it we didn't know. We don't. We we never knew how long is this going to go on. Is it just going to be two months, three months, and so on? Um, and so it's been up and down uh, the mood, depend as the pandemic itself has has progressed. So um, I, I think now. Have you seen? I mean, it was there were stats out. Some of them were published by American Theatre Magazine, specifically about our area, and also there's been local. Uh, the L.A. County has also done. Um, its own questionnaires, but have you seen members of the of that community just fold up the tent, at least even temporarily, saying, I, "We we can't, we we just can't take, afford the overhead and not not produce at the same time." Have you seen the numbers dwindle? Was the panic justified, or was it um, paranoia? No, it was justified. I I know of some theaters in our own community uh, who have been forced to stop. Uh, a, a big problem for many of, of, of us in our community are, are that the, the theater companies don't own their own building like the fountain does. And we're very fortunate, but most do not. And so they are renting their space. Those who even have a building right. uh, rent them uh, and rents were already going up. And now when you when your doors are closed and you have no income coming in, right. you're sitting there empty. How long can you- Right, well, that, that is the question. Yeah, yeah. that's the question. Yeah, it's, so it's, some of them have been able to strike deals with their landlords, some yeah. have not. Uh, I know one, one theater in particular who had plans to acquire a new building, a new facility a, a year ago. And now that it looks like will not be happening. Uh, so it's it's been devastating for for many many uh, intimate theaters. Is it, has it, have there been is there been any way for um, the community to rally against the, the theaters that are specifically under siege by circumstances by economics and and keep them afloat or is is the um, community at large just doesn't have the resources for that? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know how we could help financially what we have been how we have been able to help each other in a very tangible way is by sharing information and resources uh grant applications mm -hmm. uh funding sources um we've all also been battling this ab5 situation and so oh. uh, we've been uh very active in uh in advocating for that so we advocate for each other as yeah. much as we can and helping each other with with COVID compliance and so it all you know we're all financially strapped so we don't have a, we don't have a checkbook perhaps to, yes. to offer but we you know we offer our uh, other resources. Um, we had people on from LA County from the um, uh, from the grants and, and research department and they talked about they they were distributing COVID relief funds to arts organizations and yes. um, I have conflicting information. Their information, they were quite humble about what they were actually accomplishing. They said the deficit, and they had the numbers for, for the financial hit that the, the community, theater community had taken. And they said the amount, the amounts they were disseminating was something like 5% of, the, of that, those losses, which I would seem would be nothing. And yet I just spoke with an artistic director who said that their theater was saved from that very grant. Um, I was wondering if you have perspective on that. Yes, uh, the, it's sort of a mixed bag. I, I know the PPP loan, which was uh, right. the government loan, uh, which is actually not even a loan, it's forgivable. So it's a, essentially a grant. That was a, a, a huge help for us and for many theaters. Um, and, and now there's this large st um, stimulus grant loan that is available. Uh, the, the federal government has allocated a couple of, I think two or three billion dollars for arts relief. So that's a huge, huge help. And it does feel like lately there's been a flurry of, of grants uh, opportunities uh, coming in on emails. More and more organizations now are offering small business loans, little arts grants. Some, but, but 
some of them, when you actually go in and take a look at them, some of them are only for like, you know, five or 10 or $15,000, which I mean, to you and I, it sounds nice, but to an, for an, a theater, it's not very much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's yeah. kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I don't know what your budgets are for productions, but I can't see that even, that could barely hand, fulfill one very modest production. That, that right. kind of I mean, that would barely keep me in peanut butter and jelly, you know, for, for, <laughs> a year which is essential to me you know yeah the peanut butter and jelly peanut butter and jelly yes <laughs> yes yeah yeah um what is it do you, are you envisioning realistically if you could be candidly and not not be too um too overly optimistic about it yeah just be honest unless you're feeling overly optimistic and that's do you see, what do you see coming through this in the next, say, six months to 12 months? Do you see things stabilizing? How long, well, let's take AB5 off the table because that's a separate battle for now. Right. But how, how long do you see before, just from the pandemic crisis, things kind of stabilizing and um, theaters being permitted to put on performances indoors in their uh, venues safely at the capacity that they were doing in February of 2020, of one year ago? Well, my honest opinion is if the numbers continue as they are and the vaccine continues as it has been, and we don't get hit with uh, one of the, the, the new variants. The variants, yes. Right, which of course will, could just turn everything upside down. But let's just yep. say things continue as they are. Yes. Uh, then I think by the end of this year, I think by this fall, uh, I think some theaters will be able to produce indoors uh, at, under specific COVID restrictions and maybe at reduced capacity, maybe only 50% capacity. And then certainly by the top of, of the next year, I think it'll open up more and more and more. Okay. Well, that's some um, hopeful sort yeah. of. Sort I, of. I, I cringe when you say 50% capacity. I mean, what theater wants to? I, well, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. I, I mean, I, I could understand if it if they were 800, 1,000 seat theaters, but <laughs> these 35 seat theaters to oh, begin exactly. with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do they do? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We um, keep looking forward and keep working together, I suppose, and um, we wish each other well as, as much as possible and um, try to imagine a future where. Um, doing what we love to do is viable, I think. Uh, and uh, another component to this too, is not only theaters being ready and, and reopening uh, and doing our side of, of the equation, there also is the other side, which is the public. And that's getting the audience to come back. Uh, well, that was the county research said the people were extremely skeptical about yeah. coming into spaces, mainly because they, the people they didn't trust were their fellow audience members. Mm. They didn't trust they would be vaccinated. They didn't trust they would take precautions. That's what the research right. showed. Right. That was research done two, you know, several months ago. Uh, that may have changed, but um, yeah, it, 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 it's cause for concern. I have a feeling we're in for still a long haul here, and I, things will normally, but it may will normalize, but it may take take longer than we expect. It's going to take longer than we had hoped. That's for sure. Um, yeah. There was a, a a wave of a, a new wave of despair in, in, in the Tuesday night group uh, a few weeks ago when it became clear uh, that 2021 uh, wasn't going to uh, turn the corner as quickly as we had hoped. Because I think we all were looking for the, the beginning of the new year. It's a new administration. Oh, it's going to all be better. But then it, it, it just, and then when it was discovered how much, you know, how, how the event horizon just keeps getting pushed further and further down. Yeah. I think a lot of us just thought, oh Lord, how are we gonna how are we gonna yeah. get through this? You know, that virus is just not on our wavelength. Yeah. It's just it, not you know, our it's just not. It's yeah. just not. Yeah. Well, Stephen, good luck. I look very forward to seeing your your premiere production in your uh, outdoor space, which sounds terribly exciting, whatever it may be. Do you do you have an idea for the first play to go? I do. Leo, oh, tell do say. I, I'm, I'm holding that information. Oh, I'm, I'm not sharing that yet, oh, oh, but I will. Just uh, so clandestine. Of I know, oh, I know. Stephen oh, yeah. Sack, thank you for joining us. A pleasure. And next week, we are joined by theater critic for the LA Times, Margaret Gray, who will give us her observations on where things have been 
where things are right now and where things might be in the future.